Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. That's right, in the past couple of weeks, Gibson has released some new models. Let's start in the electric guitar world. The Dave Mustaine Flying V EXP in Alien Tech Green is finally here, I except for Gibson and Dave disappointed every single fan that pre-ordered these. This... This is what we were promised. We were supposed to get a snot green burst flying V, and I was so excited for this thing. And then this is what they delivered. I was very let down by this. However, now that I've had time to marinate about this over a couple of weeks, and I've seen some photos of them on reverb, I've definitely grown to the solid green. And now when I look at the original design, it's like, okay, I, I guess I understand why they might have changed it a bit. But another area where Gibson kind of let us down is... Yeah, if you wanted one of these, you had to have had a pre-order because they didn't tell us how limited these were. Because the day these were released, they didn't say anything right here. However, if you were lucky enough to check out Sweetwater's website, they did warn you that it was limited to 100 guitars built. And I was able to confirm that with Gibson as well. That was an extremely low number for these. And it looks like the actual number's down to 99 because one of them got kind of beat up in shipping. Looks like it'll still be playable, but that's uh, yeah, that's pretty ugly finish checking. Definitely occurred from shipping trauma. But yes, they've been ranging from 4000 to 5000 when the original retail price was 3000 However, you will be happy to know that the prices are starting to come down on these. Like today, we can pick one up for 3600 So let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. Up close, it's a really nice metallic green finish, and apparently every single one of these is just a little bit different. Like, this is an example of one that I would like, where the finish is very flat and uniform. However, other ones are really grainy. I think it just comes down to what type of wood did they use under your guitar. Is it a really tight grain mahogany, or is it a really porous one? Because Gibson doesn't do much grain filling when it comes to that. So, if you want like a TV green finish, yeah, some of them look like that, other ones are a little bit more solid. So the finish makes it different from the previous run and then we have these new fancy inlays gone are those weird dean-esque style ones and now we get the cool rust and peace logo you no know, it's the gem that rattlehead's holding and i like the fact that it's a multicolored inlay gibson doesn't do that too often so you get a little bit of mother of pearl and then some sort of a green material i haven't seen it in person to know if that's just a plastic or what probably just a green pearloid to be my guess but other than that, it's the same as the other ones, but I really wish Reverb would fix this. They're not all rust in peace flying the EXPs. It's only the green ones. And when they're documenting all these sales, they're, they're messing it all up. Because they've even added it over here that Alien Tech Green is a new finish for that. And no, that, that was a limited edition. Please, somebody at Reverb, fix that. It bugs me. Because when you go to the price guide here, you're going to see, you know, prices jumping all over the place. Which it doesn't even appear that they're recording the sales of these new ones within this anyway. But to be honest, now that these are finally in production, it's no longer the pilot run of them. They don't seem to be selling that well. I know Music Zoo had like a B stock one that sold for as cheap as 2000 You just don't hear of that yet today. So unfortunately, it wasn't the color I was hoping for, but it's pretty cool at the same time. 100 was very limited. But that's not even the coolest part about this. Look at the case. They gave it a limited edition, almost like blacklight themed case, because you've got like a dark blue navy type exterior. You got the same colors as your inlays on the guitar. And then the inside is a dark charcoal color with the black hardware and all that. They gave you a Richter strap. It was definitely a cool limited edition collector set here. And if you're gonna own one of the Dave Mustaine USA ones, that's the one to get. The Alien Broccoli version. But speaking of interesting guitars, while looking up all those sold ones, I saw Dave Mustaine has a Radiator Z over with Dean previously. Gibson. Just take this and do it on your Explorer. <laughs> That'll make me happy. Make it a string through style. Green burst with the dark border. Actually do the burst this time, please. That'd be one I'd get excited for. But if you need to learn more about this model, I do have a review of one of the pre-release runs so you can learn about all the nitty gritty details and specs. Besides finish, inlays, and special case, they're all gonna be the same. But our next two guitars we have to talk about kind of intertwine with each other. We had the release of a very expensive Everly Brothers SJ200. Now, if you're not familiar with who the Everly Brothers are, Phil and Don, they're music royalty. You've definitely heard their songs whether you realized it or not. It also depends on what generation you grew up in. For me, I would hear songs like these in old school diners. I didn't grow up with them, but a lot of people did. I think my favorite song of theirs is Wake Up Little Susie, but maybe one of these other ones is your favorite. But anyways, these guys are like royalty. 
royalty, and their calling card was the SJ200 with the double pick guard. It was extra boisterous, and that's what they were known for. In fact, this isn't the first time they had signature guitars with Gibson. I mean, they had them all the way back. But the one that they recreated this time is like that big one that they were known for. Super tuxedo vibes going on here with the black finish and the giant cream white pick guards, your mustachioed bridge with mother of pearl inserts. But honestly, as far as the rest of the guitar goes, it's really not that fancy outside of the new pick guards. And it's $8,000. Let's do a little bit of research here. There are currently 13 models within the SJ200 Gibson lineup today. There's the standard one for a little over 5,000. You've got some studio versions ranging from 3 to 4,000. There's another well-known artist signature from around a similar time period at a mere 5,300. Keep in mind that one's staying in production. It's not necessarily limited to a particular number. But then you get to your vintage reissues like the 1957 reissue and the pre-war reissues. I mean, if there was an SJ200 I want to review nowadays, it's this one it's so fancy with the old pre-war logo, the Grover Imperial tuners, super ultra fancy pick guards, super binding, cool vintage color. That thing rocks. But those range between six and seven thousand. There's a deluxe within the lineup for 62. You've got the exclusive black version, the Western classic, which let's be real here is also an interesting one because you get the ultra wide binding inlay and kind of a strange Gibson logo, but it works being offered at seven. Then you've got some other signatures like the weird Tom Petty version that sold for a lot of money and still sells pretty well on the used market. And then you had Orianthes, one that's still in production now. So it's more expensive than the vintage reissue ones, but yet it doesn't have their fancy logo and fancy binding. But yet it's not the most expensive one we've seen yet that belongs to the Tom Petty. But that had like crazy figured woods. This thing's just black. So it does seem expensive for what it is. But here's the big kicker. Only 30. So that makes a lot more sense. They went for the high price, low production, and these things sold out on Gibson's website. I honestly haven't even seen one show up on the used market, so there are very little flippers on this as well. So if you're sad that you've missed out on this, Gibson very kindly put it right here. They're also available on Everly Brothers' website. So I came over here, and yeah, shockingly enough, they are still here. You're not going to be able to get a discount from these guys like sometimes you can get from other dealers. It kind of depends on the guitar. So I was curious. How many do these guys have? Because if there's only one left, I should probably buy it, review and document it, right? So I thought, let's go 20. Do they have 20 out of the 30? Let's see if it'll let me add that to my cart here. Nope, it auto corrects it to nine. So that makes me believe these guys got 10 out of the 30 run that they can sell on their website. And it's proving to be a tough sale for them, apparently. I think the reason is, is there are so many vintage examples that you can also buy. Now, this isn't the exact same one, but apparently it's a artist prototype from 1992. Here's another one from 1990. Here's a different one that they were known for from 1969, only has the half guard on it. But what I'm trying to say here is there are vintage equivalents if somebody wished to buy it, but those are going to be very expensive. I'd hazard a guess of like 30,000 plus for like the really fancy high-end models, but that's not a market I dive too deep into. And collector's guitars are completely different, so these will sell out one day and probably be worth even more. But just letting you know, you can still buy them here if you wish. Or if you want to make a big investment, you could buy out their inventory and then you control the market. All you need is a mere $72,000. I'm not sure if they charge tax or not. I don't think there's anybody crazy enough to do that. <laughs> nah, just kidding. But this does tie perfectly with the next limited edition release, which I honestly think is the coolest of the three. We have a Cat Stevens J180 Collector's Edition. Similar story to the Everly Brothers, this is definitely gauging towards a certain market of people. Very popular in the 70s. It's one, if you listen to his songs, you've definitely heard his voice and playing style before. I don't know enough to really teach you too much about him. However, I can't appreciate this guitar for what it is. So his signature guitar, actually was an Everly Brothers model. You know, we were just looking at these things. Double pick guards, this time it's the star inlay variety. And here's basically what his original one would have kind of looked like. Now this isn't the exact one, it's just another one that's on reverb for about 30,000 bucks. It's got some pretty cool stuff going on here. So yes, there is a vintage equivalent to this, but let's just say Cat Stevens fans must be rabid over these things because they gobbled all 50 of these things up instantaneously. 
and let's just say these things look magnificent in person. So far, only one has showed up on the resale market, and I think they were asking 10,000, but now they're up to 12. But they did this run justice because they reissued the light green felt case. I love that interior. There were old Gibson cases that looked like that back in the day. And then the exterior has his cat on it, which, you know, I like animal influence guitars, so that works well. But honestly, the, the exterior of this looks kind of cheap. But that felt green interior is looking sweet. I love that about this guitar. Matches that black finish perfectly. But this bridge design intrigues me. Are you stringing it through like a wooden tailpiece? Is that what's going on there? Or are you stringing it through like the inside? I'm not entirely sure. I haven't ran into one of these before. But I am in love with the headstock on this one. Now if we go back to our vintage example, it's got a star. Now I'm not sure if this was some sort of a variation that happened at one point in time and that's just how his was or if they modified this, but this was the original Gibson logo right here, or at least very similar to it. The very, very, very early Gibsons look like this. Here's a mandolin that Orville Gibson made. So that's a really sweet calling card back to that. Gibson actually used these on the Faded series Flying Vs with the ebony fretboards, the whole crescent moon inlays. So occasionally Gibson will throw this thing out there and not enough people know that little fact. And I really like the stylization of our truss rod cover here. They also give you a plain one in the case, but it just reads Cat Stevens and the other one's blank. Cool waffle back tuners. Cat Stevens marking on the inside. We get a couple of additional case candy fun things. There's that other truss rod cover I was talking about. Pre-pack checklist. It's a couple of decals. Looks like some patches and some pins. That's what makes a signature guitar so cool. There's a lot of nice case candy. It's a fan service. They even give you a humidity pack. And it's got a sweet COA. Now to be fair, maybe the J200s of the Everly Brothers have some cool things that we haven't seen yet because I haven't found one showing up on the resale market yet. But it's also cool that this one has an LR bag system. Now sure, nowadays we can have the under saddle pickups and make that invisible, but there's something nice and vintage about all this that just makes me wish I could have documented one of these. Unfortunately, the place that I normally get the signatures, they were unable to assist me on these guitars this time. But hmm, looks like there's one in Japan that's under negotiation. Maybe I'll get in line on that. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so I think it'd be fun to document that one, even though acoustics aren't mainly my thing. All right, troglodytes, which one was your favorite from this new release? I would definitely go Cat Stevens, because they kind of let me down on the V, but it's still cool at the same time. And the Everly Brothers is sweet, but this is a brand new thing for Mr. Stevens. Thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.